mean, it's just... It's, the audacity. It's, it's crazy. It's like, could you imagine, like... If, uh, Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Okay, guys. So before we jump into this episode, Mm -hmm. we've had an audio mishap. We've had an audio mini disaster, guys. The the mics have just not been cooperating and unfortunately the audio quality for the rest of this podcast is not going to be great. Yeah. So either one of us is going to have really good audio Mm -hmm. and one of us is not me or both of us are not going to have really good audio. So I'm so sorry. We didn't realize that one of the mics disconnected Mm -hmm. mid, like not even midway, like literally in the beginning and our computer just didn't tell us. Yeah. So unfortunately guys, we don't have time to re-record this episode. Rose, Rose has got places to be. I got places to be. I got to go to the gym soon and train for my half marathon. Oh, so God damn. Guys, we, we got we got we got no time anyway anyway so sorry for yeah. this uh disaster hello hello everyone welcome back to another episode of the savage podcast yes we are back we are, we are back again <laughs> we're back again. at it again with all of the good stories i'm sure they will not be depressing <laughs> as hell <laughs> <laughs> Daniel did pick most of them so um, although I think the story I picked is possibly the most is going to be the worst one great Rose <laughs> so, oh you hung up your medals I did I hung up my I finally hung up my half marathon medals I have three God damn. Uh, because they were just sitting on my desk and I was like why I yeah. paid like a hundred dollars each for these motherfuckers. If not more, if not if more, not more for some of them well I should hang mine up you, you know, really should I have a an extra couple Oh, you have like the 5K ones? I have a 10K I that I did. Have, yeah, I don't know where I put those. And I have a like a, a special wildlife run that I did. And then I'm going to have another half marathon. So you're going to have four half marathon ones. Yes. I think you should just, you know, keep the, the the little ones like in a box. Because I mean, if you have four half marathon ones, the little ones are just, you know. Do you think that's pretty impressive? I've done four half marathons in my life. Well, that's I have done good. three so far. Yeah. Soon to be I think, four. I think even doing one is, is, is good. It's it's impressive. It's an accomplishment. It's an accomplishment. I, uh, I was debating if I'm going to do the this Vancouver one, which I'm ready to Where are you going to do a full? And then do the Calgary as well. Like a full one. No, 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 not a full one. But do the Calgary half as well. I mean, at this point, you might as well do a full marathon. No, but I feel like two <laughs> separate halves. On, like, yeah, but like, weeks like how many half apart. marathons are we going to do here? Like, what's what's the what's the end goal? I don't know. Because, like, you know, eventually you're going to be like, okay, I've done a lot of halves, <laughs> and now I should do a full. <laughs> they really need to have like a halfway between a half and a full. Do they have one oh, like no. that? All right, we were rudely interrupted. We were rudely interrupted by so technological was, <laughs> issues. I was telling Daniel he should do a, a full marathon next. It's not going to happen. I like to I do the know, half like, ones; they're fun. I, I think one day you might you might uh, try for the full one. That's my that's my prediction. Mm, I'm just going to be proud that I have I'll have a f- one more uh, medal like, than you, Rose. I think <laughs> that's the only reason why you want to do another one. <laughs> well, maybe one day you'll beat my time. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe this one I'll beat your time. I think you might actually. Mm-hmm. We'll anyway, see. guys, we have a new patron uh, who is. Uh, where we? <laughs> we're so like. It's, it's, today's a, today's a crazy day. Uh, well, for myself. <laughs> we're giving thanks to Danny for joining our our Patreon. Patreon. And guys, if you haven't joined Patreon mm-hmm. yet, it's patreoncom slash the Savage Podcast. The link is always in the show notes and description. It's basically where you get bonus episodes every single month. Every single month, you get an extra bonus episode just for the patrons, That's and correct. you get ad free content and every episode a week earlier than everybody else. Mm-hmm. So join, guys. Come join yes, the Patreon thanks. family. Good job, Rose. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So we have stories. We do have stories. I think R- R- Rose. I think you wanted to start off with yours. I oh think God! Like okay, a somber... so this story. It, it's a somber one. It's a very somber one. Okay, let's talk. about It's it. actually really bad. Okay. So this happened like I think literally yesterday or two days ago. Mm. Um, ugh, I don't know if you're ready for this. Okay, so uh... basically, obviously, we know that there is a um, potential genocide happening in Gaza yeah. and to the Palestinian people, which we've talked about before. And there was a man in the U.S., a U.S. soldier, who set himself on fire as protest for the genocide. So I I haven't even heard of this. Oh, my God. I know. 
So he self emulate immo, self immolation. I've never heard of this. Is that when you lay yourself on fire? I guess so. Yes. So basically, he said that he will no longer be complicit in the genocide. And then right before he set himself on fire on video, which I kind of saw a part of, and then I had to, I was like, I couldn't, I can't watch it. Yeah. And he basically said, "Free Palestine," and then he set himself on fire, and. Uh, his name was Aaron Bushnell and he was an active duty member of the U.S. Air Force and he went outside the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. on Sunday, which was just like yesterday, yesterday or two days ago? Two days ago. Two days ago. And, and then he, yeah, and then he did this in protest and then he later died of his injuries. He said, my name is Aaron Bushnell. I'm an active duty member of the United States Air Force and I will no longer be complicit in genocide. He was 25 years old. That's insane. I know. That's insane. Can you imagine? No. How do you even have the bravery to do this? I mean, I don't know. I know. Like, it's but, actually like, crazy. People have done this before, um, usually in protest of like, usually it's something that's happening to them or they're like, I mean, which is yeah. still like crazy, like, which is still like brave obviously like yeah. i don't want to say i mean yes it is brave but it's just kind of like it's an extreme form of protest right yeah and i i think like obviously you know it's people are talking about it we're talking about it it's exactly because you know, that's getting the, traction. sometimes that's the only way yeah but i mean like i feel like this whole <coughs> conflict that's been going on like it's been global Forever. news for a while mm -hmm. now and everybody's been talking about it and it just doesn't seem to be mm -hmm. like stopping like nothing seems to be stopping yeah so, so maybe he felt like desperate yeah Oh God, that's, 25 though, 25. So Your whole life is ahead of you. Oh my God. I know. And the thing is like he, um, like he's not even, like he's not Palestinian. Mm. He's, you know, an, an American. So he yeah. just did it literally for the cause. Yeah. Oh so God. yeah, that happened. I know. I wonder, I mean, I, I still feel like, I feel like nothing will change anything. Mm -hmm. Like, nothing will change like i feel like it's just going to happen and that's what's like disheartening about this whole thing yeah because now i've realized like no matter how much pressure no matter how much we talk mm -hmm. about it not changing well i think i think the the main lesson too is like unless the powers that be want it to yes, change exactly. then it's not going to change right like you know we can do certain things like economic oh. sanctions all this other stuff but like at the end of the day i mean the u.s really hasn't mm -hmm. got that involved from my understanding and like they have well they're like, involved all right yeah, they're involved in all the wrong ways this is what i mean mm -hmm. i mean they haven't like stepped down like in terms yeah, yeah, yeah. of like you know stop offering aid and support and you know all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff so i Except think they sent more money exactly until that happens like nothing is going to change like what what it's is so the incentive sad. to change i know it's so sad mm -hmm. but i mean hopefully this will get more people talking um and hopefully his death isn't in vain you know because that's also like Setting yourself on fire must be one of the most brutal ways to die. Oh, it would be so painful. So it's not, painful. It's not instant. It's not like shooting yourself in the head, right? Exactly. Like, if you shoot yourself in the head, it's like you're dead, like this, pretty much. Especially if it's like right in the center, like this. Okay, Daniel, we don't need a we don't need a like graphic. A Stop. A live demonstration on here. Um, um, but you're instantly like you're dead. Like exactly. You're dead. Whereas he clearly died later. It said as well. So well, that means... you would be burning. Oh God, I just can't. The pain. The pain. So again, it's like that's so crazy. So, anyways, uh, that's probably the, hopefully that's the saddest news we'll hear God today. Damn, bro. Continuing on, I know it's so. I don't. I don't know. Well, let's go to one a little bit more lighthearted. But not, a not, little bit. <laughs> hang on, hang on. In a way, it's still dark, but not as dark possibly. Hang on. No. What is happening here? Oh, okay. We're gonna do a less dark one. Yeah, less dark one. Taylor's a <laughs> very. <laughs> Have you heard about this? No, I have not. Okay, guys. So, Taylor but, Swift has a merch problem. She does. That is the title of this this uh, <laughs> Very, this article. So, for all you Swifties out there, <laughs> which there's a lot. There's so many there's Swifties. So many people are obsessed with Taylor Swift right now. I really don't get it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. What, Listen, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. Yeah, but like, but I don't get it. Me neither. I'm like, uh, and, and I, I always like. She was always like around for a while, right? Like she's always been in the pop. Sure. You know, even when we were younger, I remember. Like, she was kind of rising to fame probably when we were in high school, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, I think and so. And she had some songs out and things like that. And people were like, they liked her and she was like, you know, doing well. But then in the last, like, five years, she's gone from just being, like, one of, a pop star amongst the pop stars. Yeah. To being, like, 
the pop star. She is the pop star. Like she's like she she's legend at this point. She's a legend. Yeah. Because I don't even know why. <laughs> yeah. She reminds me of like when Britney Spears <clears throat> won her heyday. You know when Britney Spears was like the queen. I feel like and, she's like, she's probably broken even Britney's records at this point. Mm, but yeah, like, she might have kind of. Yeah. Because it, it's almost like and have you seen videos of people like going to her concerts and stuff because. It's almost like they're in like a trance. <laughs> like it's really interesting. Yeah. And they've got like full on fan pages of this, of her and yeah. people going and there's like a whole like movement around it. I don't know what it is, but there's something going on. Imagine being that famous. Oh my God, I would kill myself. I know, it would be like, it would not. <laughs> no, I wouldn't kill myself. But guys, let's not say that. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> yes. I, I don't think I would want that. <laughs> no, it would be too crazy. Like it would just be too much. Yeah, but you know, I mean, she she was already famous, so I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, I guess it's good to be super famous. I, I guess, know. yeah. Um, so one of the things that came up about this, so apparently, like, part of the problem with Taylor's merch, yeah, is like a bunch of fans have like added or not added stuff. They bought stuff, and they're saying like the quality of some of these products. What do they expect? I'm sorry. I know, but true. But also, I feel like okay. Do you not feel like if 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 you were a super celebrity and they were like selling your T-shirts as part sure. of your Official, maybe it's not official merch. I don't know, but like if it's like official merch of you know cheap lazy vegan, for example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you want it to be of a certain quality? Yeah, of course. So how bad is the quality here? So it says forty dollar tote bag was thin and terrible quality. Quote: A T-shirt with a stained color that took three months to arrive. So yeah, is this being sold in their in the official merch store? Yeah, I guess it is. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah I mean, of course, like, I wouldn't shorter. want that. That's not, that's not a good thing. At the, at, yeah. So apparently there's lack of customer service, shipping sure. delays. But I guess also it could be that they were, they've been slammed. Do you know what I mean? It, it could be because it's gone insane. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I don't, guys, if there's any Swift, I know we've talked about this, but it's like, if there's any Swifties out mm -hmm. there, um, please let us know what it is about Taylor Swift. Again, we're not hating, we're not judging, we're yeah. just very, very curious. As to what, it, what's the pull? What's as the... to what the pull is, because I've always like, and again, I say this with <laughs> as much respect mm. as I can, but it's like, I've always just thought of her as very basic, you know, white pop star. Yeah. I don't and know. Also, also like, I like some of her songs, but none of her songs, at I, least to yeah. me, have been like, revolutionary yeah. like you know there hasn't been a song that she's done that i've been like oh my god this is like the best song but maybe ever. we're missing something because people are like dissecting her songs or dissecting her lyrics or mm. like crying at her uh concerts like it's like a whole movement and it's yeah. really interesting to watch yeah like it's giving michael jackson in his heyday and i'm like okay come on guys i know it's kind of it's getting wild it's, it's giving like beatles almost like she's breaking insane records i'm sure i don't know what yeah. record she's broken but she's going insane yeah Anyway, so she earned two hundred million dollars from merchandise sales alone over the sixty shows she performed as part of the Eras tour in twenty twenty three. Yeah, two hundred million dollars just from merch, Daniel. And that's her take. No, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think that can't be. No, you think total, total. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, true. Uh, I think that's. I think that they they probably didn't do the. Like the her, wording isn't correct here. Okay, yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Because, like, then we'd have to look at all the books. So, <laughs> like, so no. like, her company earned. Yeah, so the total amount earned is probably... That's probably just, like, the revenue from the merch. That's yeah, my yeah. guess. Okay. And who knows, right? But I think yeah. that's what it is. Um, that's insane. Because that's in 2023. They wouldn't have those numbers yet anyway, like, in terms of who, which, who got which cut. You know what is I'm it, saying? This is very true. Oh, it's very look business, at me. business I know. Savvy look at me. Guys, someone I went doing to business. Their, is someone doing their taxes right now? <laughs> I went to business school, guys. I got two businesses. I know what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> that reminds anyway. me. I have to do my taxes soon. Oh, oh my god! Yeah. Don't even. Let's not talk about it. Yeah. So, so I guess people aren't happy with the quality. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I just feel like a lot of <laughs> a lot of this, like you know, you go to a concert and stuff. I know people are like they want the concert T-shirts and stuff. Right. I've never. I've never. I've gone to I think many we're just concerts. Cheap. <laughs> I mean, that's part of it. It's always overpriced. Generally, it's not the best quality. Even I guess this is even worse quality than people had expected. Yeah. But some people are really into the merch stuff. I know, and some people are like, I need to have the fans T-shirt and the, yeah. the band T-shirt. I think like, the only time I bought stuff was like maybe like a water bottle at like mm. a rave or like you know, like a little keychain. I've gotten a keychain, I think maybe. Yeah, once. like little things like that, just to just for the memory of that place. I get that aspect, but some people go really crazy with I the know. merch. Mm -hmm. I, it's it's like when I go to like like traveling as well, or like if I go to the museum, I never really. Stop in the gift shop yeah. that often, you I know? Think, 
well, you know, we're just very sophisticated. We don't care about consumers to goods. I mean, you know? I still think, but... <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just joking. Yeah. Um, but some people really... I think a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on material... Not, again, not material. Like a product, mm -hmm. and that symbolizes like a memory. Right, right, right. Which I do to some extent, but I think some people are a lot more like frame, that. Frame the tickets. It's only a lot cheaper. That is true. And then you can hang it up in your wall or something. But it's not as pretty as like a t-shirt. I, I guess, yeah. I don't know. But, you know, maybe don't buy the Taylor Swift ones because mm -hmm. it's going to break apart. Exactly. Exactly. It's going to fall <laughs> apart and it's going to be worthless anyway. I did see, speaking of getting like weird like sentimental things, I saw yeah. this thing, I think it was on my Instagram. Because let me tell you, Instagram is like bombarded with ads now. Oh my God, it's so much. I almost just want to turn off my account. Okay. Like I'm, Damn, I'm getting Daniel. to the point. Because I'll go on there and I'll be like looking at my friend's stories and stuff and it's like, Literally, I counted the other day. It goes. <laughs> you counted? Yeah. It goes two regular, per, like, people I'm following stories. Sure. Then one ad or two ads sometimes. Right. Then two rep people I'm following, and then one or two ads again. Sure. It, like, it's crazy. They're it's probably like, going to they're probably gonna start charging for to have no ads now. Oh, yeah. There'll be a subscription yeah. service, of course. I mean, it's, it's capitalism. This, what do we expect? This is how they get you. Um, <laughs> but there was a product that, I mean, some of the things do look kind of, I did actually buy one of the things that, that what did you buy? I bought that, like, did you know that tree that I have in my mm. room? The tree light, mm. which is actually kind of nice. That is pretty cool. Um, so I bought a tree light, which is basically this tree that goes against the wall and it has like little lights on it. It looks yeah. cool. Um, but another thing I saw, and it was, it's more for like, if you're like in a relationship and stuff, but it's like, people got these like things framed that would be like Google map picture or something of like where they went on their first date. And have like their names and the dates and like stuff like that as like a oh. memento as like a thing you could just have. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that, Rose? I mean, I think it's capitalism and we need to make money somehow. Yeah. Well, you're very. Would I buy it? Probably not. It's for people that are a little bit more sentimental, <laughs> you know. I am a sentimental person. Mm -hmm. I don't know, guys. Yeah. I think anyway. I'll just I'll just take a picture of the restaurant. <laughs> Have that framed. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. What's Anyways, next? Because I'm done talking about Taylor Swift. Don't buy Taylor Swift. Much. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. My God. Imagine being that famous. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. What is this? Okay. So we're moving on to um, something about sex tenancy clauses. Hang on. Hang on. Where is this? Oh, no. Okay. Landlords are enforcing no sex tenancy clauses. What? <laughs> We spoke to renters who have been targeted with the no sex clauses in their tenancy agreements. Picture this. You've just moved to Picture London. This. You can't have sex. Yeah. I mean, I, also it's just so ridiculous. Okay, it, no, but let's, let's, let's get into okay. it. Maybe there's some merit. You've just moved to London and finally got your own place. It's the first time you're living without your parents. You found a cute room <laughs> in central location. Well, I love how they're just like pic making us picture something, mm. okay? And your flatmates don't even seem like freaks. <laughs> There's just one problem. Your landlord will let you have sex. Yes, really. Okay, <laughs> first of all, that's the dumbest thing ever because how are they going to know unless they have a camera in your fucking house? But this is what I mean. House? Like, yes, like, I would understand. I'm, I'm assuming it's a noise complaint issue. Mm. Continue. Yeah. This is what happened to Lucy, 23 years old. 23 years old? Come on. Living in London, exactly. Yeah, what's she going to do at 23 living in London? Mm -hmm. after, <laughs> uh, after moving into it. <laughs> Not everyone have the same London experience Can as you. Can you not? <laughs> <laughs> um, blah, 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 blah. After moving into the shared house with the other girl, she noticed she started to notice signs in the communal areas banning music after 11 p.m., house parties, and crucially, loud sex. <laughs> See, there's the difference. Yeah. So I think... I think it... <laughs> <laughs> Brits are no strangers to outrageous landlords. I mean, I, I honestly... I don't even think you necessarily have to have a specific clause in your contract about sex. It's just like no loud noises after like 11 exactly. p.m. Exactly. Whatever you're doing, if you're doing an aerobics exercise, if you're fucking having sex with your partner, yeah. whatever it might be, it's like, you know, you need to kind of like keep it. Keep it quiet. Yeah. You know, just don't go too crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so apparently, um, let's see here. Yeah, so apparently that's a thing. So they've come up with new ways to ruin your life. No sex tendency clauses. I mean, it's just... It's, the audacity. It's crazy. It's like, could you imagine, like, like I just imagine, like, envisioning going through, like, because I've signed rental agreements, and, like, actually going through a contract and seeing that clause in there. That's so ridiculous. I would be like, what the fuck that is, is this? A, that is a huge red flag. That is a huge red flag, Because guys. it's like, first, again, I would be concerned that they are actually going to try to monitor somehow. Yeah. That would be more of my concern, because it's like, if you're going to, if you have the audacity to put that in the mm. tenancy agreement, I'd just be like... How are you going to enforce it? You know? It makes you wonder. 
it makes you, it makes you wonder if there's like cameras in the place. Exactly. Or like what else That's is going what on. I would be concerned with because I'd be like, how insane are you? Mm -hmm. Like, you know? like don't get me wrong, I'll be respectful. I'm not gonna like have sex in the commun communal <laughs> areas. You yes. Know? Yeah. Like, you know, and and I know some people like some flatmates have done that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But like, come on, like there has to be a little bit of like, yeah, you know. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. London is getting wild. <sighs> this is or or not getting wild. No one's getting wild in London anymore. I Everybody be sleeping, no, not not doing anything. <laughs> so apparently, sometimes they're disgu they're disguised as a ban on overnight guests. That's ridiculous. Which I also think is kind of bullshit. Like if I'm renting a one bed, like a yes, bedroom, you have the right to that bedroom. Yeah, and I, I want to have a guest over for one night. What are you in college? Exactly. This is not a dorm room. Yeah. So stupid. It's actually really, really dumb. Dumb. Yeah. So guys, do not sign a clause that no. says you cannot have sex or overnight guests. Okay. Yes. Just, just be okay. mindful of the contracts you're signing. This is guys. not a Christian dorm unless it's a Christian dorm, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and you agree to this. <laughs> <laughs> Another item guys that i've recently experienced without going into too much detail when it comes to contracts <laughs> but i'm just going to put a word of word word of warning out to everyone um if you are you know tenancy agreements or whatever you're doing if you're if you're maybe buying a property for example maybe it's your first house maybe it's your second one um make sure that in the contract mm. they add a clause that says that it has to be professionally cleaned or <laughs> clean to some standard because if you don't yes. do that you could be moving into a place that like is really dirty you have to clean it yourself or get a cleaner and it can be very stressful oh interesting where did you come up with this random uh tidbit of information i'm not going to divulge it on this podcast but let's just say i speak from experience <laughs> And not a fun experience either. Not guys. a fun experience. It was it was a stressful experience. A literally a shitty experience. Oh god. The the people that left actually left a yard full of dog shit. Oh okay, we're going into it. Maybe we'll. I mean, you. I don't want to go. Into, I know I don't want to go into too much details. But I mean, I think you basically happen. gave gave anyway, the details. Yes. <laughs> anyway, yeah. next story. Oh god damn, Roses. Oh god. So. Hassan Piker, he's in the news. This man is controversial. I think he just does it. I think honestly, because like I feel like he does it just for, think, for for the clicks, for the views. You think he's uh, you think he believes in the philosophy? Uh, no publicity is bad publicity. Yes. Really interesting. I think so. So he's a react. He's a he he's he's inciting a reaction. Mm, would you put it past our good friend Hassan? <laughs> I don't know. I actually don't really watch him that much mm. uh, because I don't watch stream. I don't understand how people sit through streams. This is another thing too. I don't get it either. But it's like a huge thing. And and people become really huge. Like, are we just old? We just don't get anything. We don't get Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh my god, I'm sounding like my parents. Like, um, how do people like this stuff? But like with 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 Twitch, Twitch, like when you go on there and you like watch people like play a video game, for example. Like, I, again, it's not even it's not even about me being old. It's just about like, where is the enjoyment of that? Like, I'd rather play the video game myself, or I'd rather you know. But if it I'm, is it is us being old. We don't understand the youth of today. Oh, God damn, guys! Do you think <laughs> do you think being old? Am I being crazy? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I I. I because like I like I enjoy video games sometimes I like play them and if I'm like struggling for example I don't like follow any video game channels but I will like look up cheats and hacks on YouTube sure. and like watch somebody play one little section so that I can like figure it out myself. What have you ever played a video game? Have you played video games? I play video games okay. yeah, sometimes, okay. not very often. Like okay. I have I haven't played for years and then my roommate got a PlayStation Five. Ah, uh, okay. So I've been playing a little bit of uh, oh. video games. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I think it's I hate I hate saying this because it's kind of sad. I think it's the people being lonely and yeah. it's similar concept mm -hmm. you know it's you know people want it's some kind of interaction yeah. so it's better that if you're just playing a video game by yourself it's different than playing a video game like that's why there's like virtual playing and then there's also you can watch someone else play while they make commentary mm. you kind of just feel like you're part of something it's kind I think of, that's what it is it's kind of like mukbang for video games yeah exactly I think that's what it is God damn. Um, but yeah. imagine that was your job though because like being a twitch streamer it's like they literally do streams for like what eight hours. Well, I mean, this is what he's saying. So Hassan yeah. Piker roasted for claiming streaming is harder than a real job. This is kind of surprising to me because I have heard him say that he just digs around. So yeah, you yeah, are yeah. right. He might just be saying this. Yeah. But you want to read it? So basically, guys. <laughs> Hassan, he said, "This is the quote." Yeah. Here's the quote. Yes, a real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired. But a real job, job doesn't suck the soul out of you, Hassan Soul View, told viewers. 
the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. Un unsurprisingly, his comments did not go down well with viewers, with many sharing the clip on social media. Okay. Here's my take, and it's gonna be controversial. Oh gosh, controversial. There's some truth to that statement, I'm yeah. sure. Because guys, here's the thing. I hate this whole concept of real job versus like not a real job. Mm. The thing is, most of the jobs out there, I'm sorry to say, are just all fuck like made up jobs, okay? Yeah. Like the majority of office jobs, I would say, are just made up to have you working because we all need to work to survive. I've talked about this before. We all have to make money to survive. Sometimes there's just not enough real jobs out there for every single person to do on this planet. So you're gonna have to make some shit up yeah. so that people sit there for eight hours and pretend to do something, okay? I've, I've done this before where, I, where I've worked in three office jobs before. Every single office job, I would sit there and be like, if I didn't show up tomorrow, it would make zero difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, so to say that certain jobs, and, and of course there are certain jobs that I would say are like very important jobs, teachers, nurses, doctors, you know, but a lot of jobs out there are just bullshit jobs. Like that is the reality. I'm not blaming anybody mm. because people need to work. Yeah. But to say that, oh, because you're a streamer, <clears throat> because you're on OnlyFans, because you're an influencer, that your mm. job is just like, oh, your job is unimportant. Whereas anyone else that gets a paycheck, Mm. that job is the most important job or it's so much more important or more hard or whatever it is than a streamer or something else. It's just, let's just agree that majority of jobs are stupid. And <laughs> let, let, let's just agree if it's something that's making you money and it's a you're job. doing, it's a fucking job. It's a and real job. Exactly. There there's not really fake jobs out there. There's not exactly. a fake, look, what's a fake job? <clears throat> Me like doing something and not getting paid? Like, well, what the is fake it? job would be house, house, uh, being a housewife. Because you're not getting paid for the real labor that you're putting in. Yeah. So that would be the job that you would need to get paid for. This is but, true. But, so like, yeah. But I, I, I feel like, honestly, and this came up uh, in one of the Am I the Assholes that we were, uh, that we did like years ago or like last year maybe. And it was funny because there was a group of, <clears throat> of girlfriends. Mm. And one of the girlfriends, she like, I remember. she did her own like creative business or something. And mm. so she, she was really, really busy over the Christmas holiday time. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the year was like not too, too bad. And she could like manage it. And then there's some months where it was like super quiet. So like she'd get together with her girlfriends and her girlfriend would be like, it's no way that you're that busy over the holidays, blah, blah, blah. Like you should get a real job. And she's like, I have a real job. Exactly. Like I make more money than you doing what I'm doing. And it's a fucking real job. Exactly. Like, it's, it's funny how people like get on their high horse about like, you know, hey, oh, I have a corporate job. I work for, <clears throat> you know, a big fucking bank or something. So yeah. my job is all of a sudden worth more, more valuable than yours. Yeah. And I, I have a real job and that like, they, and, and this happens, I think, primarily in the influencer world. Yes. But so many people are quick to say like influencing is not a job. Like it's like, oh, it's, they're just an influencer. They're just having fun. They're yeah. dicking around or doing whatever. And like, I just know <clears throat> from my experience, like even working with you and helping mm -hmm. you out sometimes on videos, yeah. like it's a lot of work. Like yeah. people don't understand what goes on behind the scenes and like, there's a lot to it. It's managing a business. Like it's not just exactly. like people fucking around and having fun. It's like they're earning good money. Like some people earning a shit ton of money from exactly. this. Exactly. And it's a real, it's still considered a real yeah. job. Like I'm not going to say, I, I, I think where you might've got some backlash is saying like, Oh, this job is so much harder. or This job is so much. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're, unless we're actually doing all of those jobs, we can't comment. Like mm -hmm. I can't sit here and tell you, Oh, being a Twitch streamer is easier than my job yeah. because I've never been a Twitch streamer. So like, I don't think it's fair to have that comparison. So yeah, but yeah, exactly. So I do think the way he worded it, mm -hmm. probably not the best. And again, I've never been a Twitch streamer, but I'm sure it comes with a lot of stress. Yeah. You have to deal with all these comments, people like being so annoying, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like, okay, A, you do, you pick your own hours. I'm sure mm -hmm. you could just be like, hey, I'm not going to stream for nine hours today. Maybe I'll do six hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of, of course, that would mean you would lose some money. So like, you know, there's things that you could do and he does have more flexibility mm -hmm. probably than other people. So he probably could have worded it better. And of course there's jobs that are harder than what he's doing. So yeah, yeah but I hate this whole like, oh, is this job easier than this job? And mm -hmm. I just can't help but think that because influencing is primarily, streaming is a bit different, but influencing is primarily a female business, mm -hmm. like a d female dominated business, or at least that's how it started. Yeah. I can't help but to think this is why people don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, think about people that earn money through like house flipping or like, you know, or not even house, like just where they just pay people mm. to essentially just earn more money, right? Yeah. When you invest and you just like do stuff, just getting your money to make more money. Yeah. And all you're doing is basically just like 
making your money make money. Yeah. People take that seriously, yeah. but sometimes those people are just dicking around in fucking Mexico this just is true. at a resort. Like I've seen videos of guys that are making millions of dollars and they're just sitting around in Mexico working like two hours a day yeah. and nobody says anything about that because everybody wants that life. But they look at an influencer that sits there for nine hours, yeah. which is a long That's fucking a time long to sit there. Time. And while you deal with all these comments, like I can't, like that can't be easy. No, and I think also too with 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 Twitch streaming, yeah. it's different than this because like at least with this, you know, we edit this, right? Like, exactly. I edit it. Yes. Maybe not that well, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, Sometimes to make me look bad. <laughs> no, that's never. I, I could never make you look bad. Like, you'd be an angel. Oh, God damn, Daniel. Um, be but, full of laughs. <laughs> no, but, you know, guys, today I ordered um, a little breakfast from Rose's Cafe. And I got a little, I should have taken a picture, guys. I got a little, a little treat, a little piece of banana bread that said, you is kind, you is smart, you is important. And I thought, oh. Because I was working today and I saw Daniel ordered uh, delivery and mm. I was like, and I can tell it's you, so I was like, I just made a little note. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was very well received. I had my coffee, I <laughs> had my banana bread I with my coffee. Appreciate it. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. And that that Korean street toast. You love that Korean oh, street toast. I think it might be my new, my new I favorite. I think it's your new favorite because you barely have gotten the the bulgogi burrito. I know. I feel like I'm cheating on the bulgogi you're, burrito. You're cheating on the bulgogi burrito and the Benny, but the street toast is good. Oh, I know. It just, it just, yeah, it just sounds. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, like. So I saw a biker. Nine hours of sitting there on a computer, yeah. fucking, and oh, this, this is the point that I was gonna say. Right. We edit this podcast, like we, we edit this, we, you know, we, we kind of choose what we're putting out there. Whereas if you're a Twitch streamer, that the, the amount that you can edit is really limited because you're just kind of live, right? Like, yeah. So the fact that they're saying, oh, people like clipped his stuff yes. and then put it on social media, <laughs> so it's like. You're a victim to that. So if you say one little thing wrong, yes. you can't. You don't have a chance to edit it or do anything. It's gone. Like yeah, people this have is what scares it. me about yeah. streaming. Yeah, or like live, anything live. It's anything live, because like, like literally think about how much you talk. There's something you're gonna say at some point mm. that might be misconstrued. You know, like imagine like your conversations that you have, you know, on like in your living room with yeah. your family. There's probably a million things that somebody will say that's gonna get you canceled on the internet. Mm. Okay, so that's what the, that's the thing about streaming. It's like, you're gonna say something. You're exactly. gonna say something stupid. The chances, of, the <laughs> thing is, the amount of stupid shit that I say in my <laughs> yeah. lifetime, like it's, it's insane. Like Cancelable stuff. All the time. Yeah, that's why sometimes you gotta step out of the internet yeah. and go meet people in real life, because then you'll realize, oh, actually, it's okay to say some things that are a little bit, exactly. and you can just be like, hey, that's not okay, and then you move on. What do you think? What do you think is gonna happen with this generation? Like, I don't know, but I'm scared. This generation that's like TikTok and Instagram, and they were, they were like, we've talked about this before, but like, you know, ever since Instagram was um, went live, which I think was 2010 or 2011, um, it, it had a direct correlation mm. um, in youth like depression rates, both in men and women, yep. but primarily women because it was very primarily like, like young women. Young women. Yeah. yeah. So they looked at preteens and like t early teens. And it was really disturbing statistics, guys. The levels of depression, the levels of suicide. Oh, God. And it, it literally, it had stayed, like, relatively, I want to say, consistent for the last kind of, like, 20 years or so. Right. As soon, it was, like, literally, you could almost mark it on a calendar, like, as soon like, as Instagram arrived. Right. And smart. No, it, when it became, yeah, like, basically, when social media became available on, on smartphones. Phone, yeah. That was part of it, but then Instagram as well. Sure. That was another Which catalyst. I think was, yeah. And it just shows you like the impacts of this. So there's this group of individuals like, and I think about this all the time and I'm like, how thankful I am that I grew up in a time where, you know, we still had technology. So yeah. I, it doesn't, it, technology doesn't make me feel uncomfortable, but we didn't like, like have it up 24 seven. We yeah. didn't have phones in our hands all the time. Like I even catch myself lately now, like I'll be like watching TV on my phone do And I'm like, I need to fucking stop doing this. Like. I really need to like figure out or like maybe create a, a task for myself or like a thing that yeah. I start doing where when I get home, maybe I just like put my phone away for a while. Like yeah. just leave it alone, go, do a, go about my thing, like do like whatever, like cook dinner, all that kind of stuff and just stay away from it. I would like, I, I don't know. Like, I know, it's so crazy. It's toxic. It it's is, so toxic. It's actually like toxic and I'm finding even my like attention span, it's getting really fucked up because I never had problems sitting and watching TV show. Yeah, you, like, you especially. Yeah, I used to love like a good program or a movie even or anything like that where, you know, because my life is pretty busy, so sometimes it's nice just to sit and just not think about something, right? I can't do that anymore. I have problems. That's scary because 
if you're this bad yeah because daniel's is you're like not that bad with your phone yeah so imagine how bad it is for people that are actually on their phone all the time yeah. i'm just finding i've noticed in the last yeah. couple of years like it's bad i think it's gotten worse with short form content like, like reels and TikToks. yeah that has i think that has gotten exponentially worse in terms of our attention span mm. and just like you know the the constant dopamine hits yeah. it's like if it was bad before with facebook and instagram now with the short form videos it's gotten so much worse yeah um so i don't know well that's interesting because the story that i kind of wanted to talk about today but i was like okay maybe not because i saw this tiktok okay as i as <laughs> as we talk we, about as we bashed out how the, bad it is tell us more about tiktok bros <laughs> <laughs> oh god the thing is though it's so good but so bad at the same time this is the thing and i, I honestly i like and I, we've t I've talked about this a couple times on the podcast and i'm getting more and more you know uh, addicted grumpy in my old age i guess <laughs> where i'm like i really need to start start setting some boundaries or something where you know when i come home i like put my phone away for a couple hours like yeah. just get away from it like get away from the constant go 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 or like have days where i just leave my phone at home you know like oh god but even See, the that fact, gives me anxiety. The fact that it gives us anxiety to do that, I know. though, that's a fucking problem. I know. That's a big problem, Rose. Anyway, so let's talk about let's talk uh, about the TikTok I watched. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So basically, this woman was saying, and I can't remember she had some kind of background, mm -hmm. it, you know, some kind of professional, and she said that there's going to be a dementia tsunami, as in the risks of dementia. So there's obviously certain risk factors for dementia. Right. Okay. It's not, obviously some of it I'm sure is genetics, yeah. but a lot of it is lifestyle, okay? And apparently, and I don't know what it is, obviously there's various different lifestyle factors that contribute to dementia, but they're saying that in the next, I can't remember how many years, like in a few decades or so, yeah. there's going to be a gigantic increase in the cases of dementia. And I can't help but to think it has to be the technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure it's a mixture of- Did they say what the prediction factors were and what, why- I can't remember exactly, but I don't let me see if I can find the, but I mean, I can only guess that yeah. it's obviously our reliance on technology. The fact that we're not uh, the loneliness factor, the fact that people are not oh, yeah. interacting in person anymore. I think that's a huge factor. I saw, and I don't know if it was like a TikTok or what it was, but I saw something about the loneliness. Someone was talking about like yeah. loneliness and, and how it's increased across the world and how dangerous it is because um, at the end of the day, we're very social like beings and for us to be like lonely or by ourselves a lot of the time, mm -hmm. like, and I know some people are introvert versus extrovert, but that's slightly a different thing. It's like the fact that we're not interacting with people on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. It's actually detrimental to our mental development as well. And that it, it is linked <clears throat> somewhat to dementia. Well, let's see here. So it's already on the rise. So it's not necessarily just. That could be also because we're living longer though too, right? That could also be it, but yeah. we I don't know. I mean, let's, that could also be it, d definitely. So it says new study published in the, let me see when this was published. So this was like last year was published. Mm. So it was published in the Lancet Public Health reported that the number of adults aged 40 years and older. So this is, you know, obviously post uh, technology living with dementia worldwide. Oh wait, worldwide is expected to nearly triple from, oh no. So this is our generation. So. It's expected to nearly triple from an estimated 57 million in 2019 mm. to 153 million in 2050, unless countries address risk factors. So let's yeah. talk about Yeah, let's hear the risk mm -hmm. factors. I'm interested in this now. Yes, so it will, be, it will rise in every country with the smallest estimated increases in high income Asia Pacific and Western Europe, which is 53%. That, so it'll rise by 53%. Mm. Anyway, whatever. So population growth and population aging are the main reasons behind a large rise. Okay, that also does make sense. Yeah, that obviously makes sense. we have, uh, Anyway, whatever. When okay. you live, well, this, this is the end of the day. When you live longer, like if you live to 100, something in your body's going to go. You yeah. know what I mean? If it's your mind, if it's mm -hmm. your heart, if it's your, you know, like, we're just not designed to live forever. So it says, okay, so it says, the Lancet study analyzed dementia prevalence in 195 countries worldwide uh, and highlighted the important, the four important uh, key risk factors. Smoking. Okay. Okay. Obesity. So that's, oh, interesting. High blood sugar and low education will will have on future trends, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, uh, so maybe it has nothing to do with technology. According to the study, improvements in global education access are projected to reduce dementia, mm -hmm. but be, uh, this will be countered by 
uh, anticipated trends in obesity, high blood sugar, and smoking, mm. which are expected to result in an additional blah, 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 blah. Um, so maybe damn. I'm wrong. Maybe it's just about smoking. And, but obesity. no, I can't help but to think that because it's, it's like your brain. Yeah. So of course, obesity and, you know, smoking, all of those things, because your brain and your body, it's all fucking connected. Yeah. But I can't help but to think that some of it has to do with the fact that, you know, we're just not using our brains. <laughs> I don't no, know. I, no, and I, I, I think it's not that we're not necessarily not using our brains, that we're just using it for short stints. Yes, yes, So yes, if we're yes, doing, yes. like, short-form content, and our brain realizes, like, what we're training our brain is, first of all, the TikTok content doesn't really matter. <laughs> so this isn't anything that they have to we have to remember or learn. And we just right. kind of watch it. kind of goes in and out, in and out. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, and then your brain's probably like, okay, fuck, I don't have to remember anything. You yeah. know what I mean? Like... I, I could be um, exag exaggerating a little bit, but I do feel like, honestly, and I know I keep saying this, guys, on the end, I said it a couple <laughs> times in this podcast, I need to figure out for my own personal life, like, how I I um, reverse what's going on. Because I definitely have noticed, like, yeah. my attention span is getting horrible I know, now. Me too. And it's bad. Like, it's I, so bad. I just, I, I can't even, you know, sit down and just, like, focus on one thing. I'm just, like you know, having to do a million and one I things. I've got my phone open all the time. I'm like, this is too much. Like, I think this goes to show that what we always talk about, which is there's only so much we can individually do. I'm not saying we're out of control and, com and completely out of control. Yeah. But when society goes in a certain direction, it's very difficult to go in the opposite direction. So because we are normalized phones and mm. everyone has a phone, because I still remember in high school and stuff, I like I wanted a phone and like I had a phone and not everyone had a phone. Yeah. And even when we had phones, there was very limited things you could do on the phone. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, obviously that, that means we were talking to each other and like all this, all this, all this stuff. But now it's like, we can't do anything without a phone. Mm -hmm. And that's even people that are, that are barely on their phones. They still feel probably insecure without a phone or like yeah. they feel anxious without a phone. So it's it's very difficult when society goes in a certain direction to go mm -hmm. in the other direction. It's it's almost almost impossible. Yeah, because you think to yourself, you're like, if oh, I don't have my phone with me, no one can contact me. I know, and that's, but that's not such a bad thing. It I know. That's what's <laughs> but bad. it is. But then in a world I think mostly I'm thinking like, what if something bad happens? Because, like, it's interesting because, like, my parents, um, they're from Korea, right? I mean, I'm from Korea. Anyway, back in, <laughs> back in the day. You're from Korea, Rose? I'm from Korea. I know. It's, it's, it's as if I never talk about it. No. Um, so, back in the day, right, when they were young and mm. they said, basically, um, basically, when you get married, if you are anything other than the a son, if you're a daughter, <laughs> anything other than a son, <laughs> if yeah. you're a daughter and you get married... You essentially become part of the other family. Yeah. And you don't really hear from the daughter, like maybe once in a blue moon, right? Because now you're part of the other family. And back in the day, they didn't have phones. Yeah. They, they barely even had a, they didn't even have a tell. Okay, guys. So we had a we <laughs> realization that our mic situation was mm -hmm. not good. No. Nope. So hopefully uh, for this last 10 minutes, <laughs> yeah, the, the last, mic will sound nice. <laughs> the last 10 minutes of this entire freaking podcast. But anyway. Anyway, I forgot what we're talking about. We're talking about dementia yeah, and all kinds of shit. Technology. Well, I, I, we were talking about how, like, you know, honestly, it's gotten crazy with technology and how, like, I'm personally finding my own self mm. is like my, my attention span is just getting so messed You're up. You're not the only one. Definitely. Yeah. And I think, I think honestly, we all collectively guys and i'm just making suggestions for other people you do your own thing mm. but i think we should start trying to establish some kind of way to kind of step back a little bit from technology like still use it we still need to use it all the time but like you know i don't need to be sitting there scrolling through tiktok while i'm watching tv yeah. while i have music on while i'm doing you know what i mean like you don't problem. need to be doing that like so i think kind of streamlining our lives a little bit in a sense that like and also maybe on a saturday when you don't like you maybe you're going to meet some friends or something like just don't bring your phone God, that gives me anxiety. I might start doing that, and then you know what? Someone might try to reach reach me, but hey, I can I can respond when I get home. Or I think I feel like the next step, like we've talked about, is going to be the rise of the dumb phones. Mm. We're going to see another little trend where people are trying to bring back the dumb phones or something. I like that idea. We talked about this before, where you get a dumb phone. And you essentially, yeah, you like on a weekend, like a Saturday, you're going to meet friends. You just yes. bring your phone just so you can contact them. I think that's, that's a good it. idea. Yeah. Should we get a dumb phone? I think so. Pay an extra like, I don't know how much they are nowadays with just voice talk. Or may, Are you allowed to get two SIM cards now? Because I know 
before you couldn't get two sim cards of the same like number oh that's a good question because if you could question. do that then i would definitely have a dumb phone could you not just you, could you not just take your sim card out of your regular phone i guess but that's just extra work yeah true yeah <laughs> i mean it's not that hard Rose. daniel we live in a world where things are easy okay mm, yeah sorry um i heard this story on TikTok. <laughs> Did you actually? Well, no, I didn't hear this specific story. Mm. But basically, I heard a really sad story of somebody. I think it was a cancer patient or some kind of patient mm. that died because of a doctor shortage. Yeah. So in South Korea, guys, my home country, got to mm-hmm. be proud. Once again, another w- lovely story coming from my home country. Mm-hmm. So I guess what is happening is South Korea uh is currently having this like doctor shortage mm-hmm. because doctors are protesting. So yeah. they are, I guess they're kind of like on strike essentially. Okay. And they are protesting because of some kind of, I think it's like a med school, uh, something to do with med school. Let's see here. So basically South Korea's government on Monday told young doctors that they had until the end of February to return to work or risk being punished for staging a week long protest that has disrupted services for for patients at several major hospitals. Mm -hmm. So two thirds of the nation's residents and intern doctors had walked off the job to protest a government plan to increase the number of students admitted to medical school in a bid to address what authorities say is a shortage of doctors that is set to worsen in one of the world's fastest aging societies. But why are they, why are they protesting the government's plan to increase the number of students admitted? Because the doctors currently don't want more competition. I guess. Yeah. And then I guess, I guess it would mean that if there's more people working as doctors, maybe they could like pay them less or, you know what yeah. I mean? It could make Because, well, I think things. Korea system, I think there's a, it's a mix of private and public. Yeah. But, um, so yes, I think it's about money. I don't know the full ins and outs. Maybe yeah. it'll get to it here. Yeah. But I think it's about money. I think it's about the fact that they don't want more competition. And the fact is like, I mean, I don't know how it is for young doctors. It says that the government, so young doctors say that the government should first address pay and working conditions uh, for before trying to increase the number of physicians. So maybe there's some merit. I don't actually know yeah. um, because maybe it's there. I don't know how it is, right? Because I don't know how short this doctor shortage is. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know the full details. It's so, it's, yeah, it's challenging. I mean... Because the thing is, the problem is, like we've talked about, Korea is an aging population, right? Yeah. Because obviously the baby boomers, like my parents' generation, there was a lot of children coming from that generation. Yeah. And now they're going to age. Now they're getting into the seniors. And I don't know how many doctors there are in Korea. Yeah. I, d- I don't think that there was ever a shortage before. Mm-hmm. But maybe maybe there is a shortage. Maybe there, I have no fucking idea. That's crazy. To be honest, like, uh, you know... This this situation is happening in a lot of like yeah. developed countries. Mm-hmm. Is the fact you're going to have this aging population? It's which a huge problem. It, it puts a huge strain on your um, uh, health resources mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, you know, unfortunately, as it is, as we get older, we are going to have to make more trips to the hospital. Like it's just <laughs> part of the the process, oh you know. You and have to add in that doom and gloom in there, don't you? We're going to be those people too, Rose. Daniel, I don't want to hear it. I have to go for my like you know hip replacement. Stop. My, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. And so, you know what, honestly, um, who was it that was telling me? Someone was like, you know what, if you, if you have a business idea right now, if your business targets that demographic, the older it's a demographic, good business to get into. Sure, yeah. It's like housing or anything that, like, you know, maybe you make a, a revolutionary walker or something. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Like that is a population that's growing and a market mm-hmm. that's growing. Huge market. Yeah. So I guess many South Koreans support the plan, mm-hmm. uh, which has been spearheaded by the president. Uh, the recent poll showed about seventy six percent of respondents approved of the plan. Mm. Regardless of political affiliation, which is quite interesting, and so so a lot of people support it. Mm. Um, but maybe the doctors again. I don't know whose side I'm on here because yeah. I it's hard for me to know the ins and outs. Um, it says though that uh, in in the package of the policy plans, it will improve medical services. Blah blah blah. Increase the number of medical students by two thousand a year, and expand legal protection against malpractice. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And it's 
plans to give incentives for doctors to practice in essential disciplines such as pediatrics and general surgery, yada, yada, yada. See, it makes sense to me what the government's doing. It but does I seem to make sense. Yeah. Some doctors, however, say that the government's plan is aimed at winning more votes in the April general election. In a statement, medical professors at Seoul National University, which runs one of the top medical schools in the country, called on the authorities to postpone discussing the plan until after the elections, which mm. is also very interesting. Mm. So, I mean, that could also be true. I mean, everything's a political move. This is true. And which I, is, don't, I wouldn't put it past the current president of the of South Korea. True, which is crazy when you think about it. Like these essential things I that know. we need are like a, t- a, 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 pl- a ploy in yes. a fucking political game. Like how fucked up is that? It's like, really fucked up. This is healthcare we're talking about, people. Mm-hmm. Like not a not a way to win votes, but, that, it, but it is a way to win votes. Everything's a win to win. And, yeah, exactly. And that's the problem. That's the fucking problem. I mean, even let me look about, think about like Joe Biden, right? It's like a lot of people are saying, I would vote for him if he called a ceasefire. So it's like, if he called a ceasefire, I would think, oh, he's calling it because he wants votes, which is so fucked up, but that's mm-hmm. probably what's going to happen exactly. if it ever happens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it sounds like it makes sense to me. Mm. Um, you know, I don't even agree with the current president, but it sounds like this thing makes sense. Yeah. And, and I guess I think that this is literally just my speculation. I think it's because like people that went to med- medical school at that time when they went, you know, they, they had to do so much. They worked hard. I think there's yeah. a part of that as well. It's like, you know, obviously a doctor is like a very prestigious title. It's an elite club, right? It's You're like, I had club. to work hard to get here. Exactly. Not, and, and they only let in a thousand people. Exactly. Well, now they're letting in 2000 more. Exactly. So, so like, I worked really hard. I had to do, I had to put up with all the, you know, my blood, sweat and tears went into yeah. this. And now all of a sudden you're going to let in 2000 more students. Like, yeah. and then now that's going to affect my bottom line. That's my, my understanding and my guess as to what's uh, maybe happening with the protests yeah. and especially in a country that is extremely competitive and it's very difficult to succeed in anything really. Mm. So I think there's a part of that, but I don't know. That's yeah. just my speculation. And on that positive <laughs> note, guys, thank you, thank so, you so much. much. Sorry for the audio quality. Oh, God. Yeah. We apologize. Mm-hmm. I hope you enjoyed the last 10 minutes of good audio. Hopefully that worked. There it you did. go. Yeah, it did it's work. working. Thank God. Um, hopefully we don't have any technological issues mm-hmm. next week. Let's see. But yeah, guys, make, <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And of course, follow us on Instagram uh, and all of the podcast platforms. Mm-hmm. And what's what What else should they do, Daniel? And of course, guys, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash the Savage, po- Savage Podcast. <laughs> we can't even talk. Uh, descri- uh, link, <laughs> link will be in the show notes. Um, guys, you get exclusive content. You get ad-free content. And it starts as little as low, uh, as, low <laughs> as $3 a month. I think so. we need an app. We do. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. And we will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.